What is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Brennan Myers and welcome to the Create You Experience. And before we jump into the actual podcast that is across all audio platforms, including Spotify and iTunes, is we create an experience for you with the guest of my choosing so that you can gain some inspiration, some motivation, or even strategies and structures to incorporate into your own life and your own vision. So, my man Brett Maverick, a YouTuber, a stylist, a, a, a stylist, I can't even speak, my gosh. He is someone that not only motivates and inspires young men all around the world, but he's making leaps and bounds in his own career. And what are we doing today, man? Okay, first of all, thanks for having me on, Brendan. But today I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your Tinder profile and the exact messages to send to multiply your dates <laughs> tenfold. So. Tenfold. <laughs> so seriously, buckle up, because you're gonna grab his phone right now. Yeah. We're gonna jump into it and then we're gonna go on the podcast. Take notes, write down my messages, steal my messages. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go. All right, man, so you have Tinder. You just downloaded Tinder. the app. <laughs> And uh, you have a lot, a lot of messages. You have a lot of, so how do you set up your profile? What's first? Okay, so the best advice I can give you on building your Tinder account. Number one thing, this is what I tell everyone, is you want high quality photos. That's the first thing that women are gonna notice. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how handsome, how attractive you are, how ripped you are. You can work on those things, but if you don't have good photos, if they're dimly lit, you know, basement photos, she's gonna scroll right past them. She's gonna think you're creepy. You probably live in your mom's basement. <laughs> like, exactly. it's just not good, okay? So, first thing you wanna do, have nice quality photos. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is my first photo. Obviously, nice uh, bouquet in the background. That's that blurry background, you know? But I'm in focus there. Doesn't hurt to have a shirtless picture if it's not like a mirror selfie or something. If it looks, um, kind of, uh, what's, what's it called when uh, you take a picture of someone without them knowing? Oh, oh, like candid. a B-roll or like yeah. candid photo. If it looks candid <laughs> and you have your shirt off, that's fine because she's gonna, she's gonna think it's natural. You were just in your natural habitat, right? Next photo is actually a GIF, GIF, I don't know, who knows, of me with a puppy. Puppies always help. There's studies that show, I'm serious, there's studies show women are three times more likely to give their number to a guy with a dog rather than a guy without one. So puppy picture. Uh, just casual photo, me in uh, New York, just looking fly. Um, me hiking, you know. I'm an outdoorsy type, I'm an adventurous, and oh, <laughs> do I have my shirt off? Wow, look at that, I didn't even know. Um, <laughs> kind of a headshot, um, me with my longer hair. And that's a, that's a selfie to show that I'm not just always uh, super professional and stuff like that. Um, Another picture, you know, whatever. And the last photo, th this is also another great tip, is have pictures in groups. Because women love to see that you're sociable, that other people are comfortable with you. If other people are comfortable with you, then she's gonna feel like she can be comfortable around you too. And she's not gonna feel like you're gonna, she's gonna be creeped out by you. And if you notice, bottom left-hand corner, what is that? It's a girl, yeah. Girls are also comfortable with you, even though that's my sister. She doesn't have to know that. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the type of pictures you want. And don't be afraid to smile. Girls like a nice smile. Somebody who's not, a, a, not afraid to, you know, let their emotions out and have some fun. Okay, let's get down into the actual bio. So my bio just says, just looking for a cute girl to grab cheesy fries with. Um, keeping it casual. Uh, you don't have to give your whole self away. You don't have to be too serious like, oh, I'm looking for my wife, you know? Because um, that's gonna be a little too intense for women a lot of times. Some girls are obviously looking for a relationship, but most girls, let's be honest here, this is Tinder, man. They're just trying to have some fun or they're on there to get some, val some validation. They're trying to get a little boost in their ego and 90% of women don't actually intend on meeting up with you. And you gotta, you gotta have that same vibe. Uh, Tinder is not your main form of picking up women. It's just a supplement, you know? Real life, that's your bread and butter. That's where you should be practicing. That's where you should be, uh, what's, what's weird? That's the word, that's where you should be actually actively pursuing women. Tinder is just a supplement. It's just the, the icing on the cake. Have your, have your Instagram account attached to show that you're legit and you're not just a fake account. Also, she so can click on your pictures and uh, see a little more of you, see what you, uh, you're all about. 
So yeah, that is how to set up. And then from there, from there, from there, um, you go into the messages, right? Because obviously the bio is important. See, I, I didn't even know this stuff, man. So thanks for the quick tips for all the photos and stuff. Because you're actually hitting all different areas of like your life, like your relationships, like what people truly want, what they earn for, right? For sure. So bio, there you go. And then now the messages. Let's see the message. Let's just see. Let's see your likes really quick. Okay. <laughs> It's top secret, don't tell anyone. So we got a couple matches here, we got some messages, and <laughs> some, I'm gonna show you some things that work and some things that might not work so well when it comes to the messages. But like I was saying, the most important thing is your actual pictures and how your bio is set up because people are wired to make snap judgments of you. When they first see you, they already are kind of thinking about if they wanna meet up with you or not. And women, actually know if they want to sleep with you this is what i've heard within like 10 minutes of meeting you so it's really important to have a good first impression and uh that that happens right when they see your profile so let's get into some messages so we're gonna start it off with a little more risque a little more uh maybe uh maybe uh racy type of question or uh messages so this one <laughs> this one i just thought it was so funny and so clever and it's want to sit on my face and then immediately after you say grab a drink with the asterisks damn autocorrect it's like playful but it's a little dirty you know kind of hinting a little sexuality showing that you're sexually interested in them but um and a lot of girls will go along with it if they're interested in you and some girls will just shoot you down <laughs> but i get a lot of really fun messages back and a lot of fun replies with this one and it's a really good way to escalate things and show your intent that you you're not just closed in, you're allowed to you know, have a little fun and express your sexuality and stuff like that. I kind of stopped using this message, I kind of stopped using this message because I just kind of feel like a fuckboy. Yeah, a, <laughs> and little, it's a, little, a little bit. <laughs> and it kind of looked like a douche. Yeah, but, it's uh, a little aggressive. Yeah, and it's, it's not really who I am. Like, I, you know, I like to have fun, but it's just maybe a little too intense. Yeah, a little, little sitting on yeah. faces. But uh, yeah. hey, if, if, if you guys think it's funny, you guys want to try it out, give it a try. Another one that I use, is carry any other weapons besides those eyes. And I do actually only send this to girls that have really pretty eyes. Um, you know, obviously it's just kind of joking around that her eyes are so pretty that they're deadly, like if looks could kill. Um, so a lot of girls really like that. It's uh, really sweet and I get some good messages back from that. Another good tip is qualifying, qualifying phrases. These are phrases that you use on women um, to make them kind of qualify themselves because women love having the framing. They love being in control of the frame, you know. Uh, they love having all the power, like, you ask them to meet up, oh, we'll see, but if you say something like, um, say something like, well, only if you're on your best behavior. Say, let's meet up, but only if you're on your best behavior. Then it flips it on them. You're in control of the framing. So she's gonna say something like, yeah, you, you bet I will or something like that, you know. But um, it, it flips it and gives the power back to you. I know it's crazy, it sounds like a lot, and it sounds like games, but that's life, man. Dating is a game, it's the dating game. Um, another one is that I used a lot is, Timmy, get back inside where it's safe. <laughs> and this is from that viral video that Casey Fry and uh, Nick Coletti did. Um, editor, roll that now. Timmy, put the ball yeah, down. About... Get inside where it's safe. Hey, why don't you go back inside, man? I'm just trying to bow my breasts. Hey, no, no, no. Son? <laughs> but um, if they get it, it works really well because it went super viral and it's really funny. And I know a lot of people really love that video, but if they don't get it, then it kind of just is a flop. So it's <laughs> yeah, kind of a right. risky one. <laughs> Cause I, I did get a lot of girls like, what the fuck are you talking about? So that one's uh, kind of a shot in the dark, but it's worth a try. So, so you would say that whenever you message someone, you wanna, you wanna start with like a clever message. Never say just hi or hey, how definitely, are you? Definitely, girls really operate off of their emotions. So if you can spike that emotion, they're gonna be interested and they're gonna be curious to see if you can keep that emotion high. And um, it's, so it's really important to grab their attention right off the bat. If you just say hey, then they're really not that likely to respond. And it works the same way with me. You, you probably are wired the same way. 
uh, if some if a girl sends me a really clever message then it's gonna spike my emotion a little bit and I'm a lot more likely to reply whereas if they just say hey then I'm not as likely so it works both ways right Two so ways you want to be like create create excitement and, and yeah, create exactly. the opportunity yeah. to say something back spike their emotions a little bit for, for sure and yeah dude if you're a man is as kind of as much as it kind of sucks you're responsible for uh, giving them opportunities to to bring what they have to yeah, the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to create an opportunity. This this happens in real life too. Like a lot of guys will go up to a girl and approach her. It's like, okay, great, you did the approach, but you didn't come. You didn't continue the conversation. You didn't give her a chance to respond or to uh, you know um, show what she's all about. And you just, so you just created this awkward, awkward situation for her. You approached her, but then she didn't, you didn't give her, you didn't ask her anything. You didn't create any sort of a And then she feels like she has to create it for herself. Yeah, and, she, she feels and like. a lot of women don't want to do that. And they don't. And then you get pissed off because the conversation fell flat. Dude, you were the one that approached her. You yeah. need to, it's your job to keep that going. So yeah, awesome. that's something else. Um, so I use that a couple of times, you can see. And what's um, a couple, just give a couple more tips of, of like how you would respond. So like, let's say you're, you're in a conversation and um, you know, it's going pretty well and it's kind of getting a little dry. Yeah. What do you do? When it's getting a little dry, it depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I, if I really can't think of anything, I'll just wrap it up. I'll be like, hey, it was really nice talking to you. Uh, let's connect. I'd like to meet up with you sometime. And um, this is another chance to use a qualifying statement. You say something like, Hey, let me grab your number. But then you say, wait, what's my name again? So then it kind of takes the pressure off of you and it puts it on her to remember your name because she's going to feel bad if she can't remember your name. Mm, but, clever. Uh, so, Shit. So she said, <laughs> yeah. So she said, this one works really well. So if she says, um, it's Brett. Be like, ah, there you go. Okay, go ahead. And then you give her ah, your phone. So but you it, qualify. Yeah. You're like, hey, yeah, yeah. You, you can have it. Yeah, exactly. You, she earned it, kind of. But if she can't remember, you just be like, all right, well, that's strike one. You got to yeah. remember it next time. I'm Brett. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. Brett, by the way. And you reshake her hand or whatever. And awesome. And continue. Um, yeah, so. Freaking tips, man. Dude, I, I think that that's it, man. That's I, good? I, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think that's it. So, so ladies and gentlemen, like, this, this, is, uh, this is some good stuff. This is like, you know, I so. if, if, and I said ladies or, and gentlemen, because there are, are women that are watching this, and, and obviously you can comment down below. All the and, ladies are going to be on the lookout yeah, for these. They, now. They go, no, I'm not going to. But, but the truth of the matter is, when you just connect and you create conversation and you allow a, a woman to feel safe, almost in a way, but also feel like there's, there's adventure with that. It opens up the doors for that relationship and what you want to create. And you can do this on Tinder, you can do this on Bumble, you can do this on any dating app, and even in person. And uh, you can actually translate a lot of these things that you just learned here into the real world and the real world. I mean, it's kind of like the real world. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So, bro, I appreciate that. Thanks for Great. hopping in here for the experience. Now we're gonna jump on over to the podcast and dive a little bit deeper into everything that he's saying and even himself and how he's become the person he is today. So, without further ado, Let's jump right in. Hey, my name is Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right Cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you Welcome to the Create You Experience as you heard it, as I say every episode, my name is Brennan Myers and my man Brett Maverick, hold on, I'm not going to give an introduction yet, but he's just shaking his head up and down. He's like, hell yeah. Yeah, you do the same thing every time. I yeah, love you do. the introduction, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but welcome to the Create You Experience where we bring your vision to life and we do this through strategies and structures. And oh, by the way, we're here on YouTube and before the actual YouTube begins, uh, we have an experience and we teach you something or we allow you to get to know the guests a little bit more so that just makes the podcast so much better, doesn't it? Right. So, um, also we're on all audio platforms. So if you're here on YouTube and you want to go listen to it as you're driving 
down the road in your nice Jeep with the 24s and the <laughs> three and a half lift, then you can, okay? But no, seriously, uh, when you do come into the crit you experience anytime, like uh, your review is welcomed. Uh, I would really love to hear your review. One star to five star, whatever it is. I also give you um, seven free gifts when you do review the podcast in the description here on the show notes or on YouTube. You can just click that link and put in your email, whatever, and leave a review on iTunes. Five stars, one star, whatever it is, and I'll give you those seven gifts. Um, so, yeah, five stars. Thanks, Brett. This one's going to be a five. Yeah, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I don't know about your other ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, but, they're, all, they're all good. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good. Trust me. <laughs> Watch them all. So, so um, yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited, man. It's yeah, awesome. man. I love the setup, by the way. Yeah. You know, we got Mike over here. Yeah. Shout out to Mike, he's shout out to Mike behind the camera. camera. Yeah. He's, he's, no, he's, I love it. He's a banger, man. He's, ne he's next level. So, Brett Maverick, everyone, uh, before the podcast began, we did a little Tinder thing. Thingy. Yeah. yeah um, and you have out, <laughs> you have thousands of likes, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Like, you're a good looking dude. You're, you're, you're doing something right. Yeah, no, yeah, you, right? Mm. You have YouTube, you know, you're, you're over, you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands, and you're teaching guys uh, really how to take their style to the next level. So, man. Yeah, that's part of it, man. How, what, what, like, who the fuck are you, man? <laughs> like, where is this human I'm being just coming a guy. from? I'm just a guy, just like, just like everyone else out there. But I started YouTube, you know, about two years ago. I just, um, I'll be honest, man. I just didn't want to work a nine to five. And I always wanted to be a YouTuber growing up. I tried it once when I was a freshman in college. I tried doing the fitness thing. I was trying to be the next Steve Cook. And, uh, oh, Stevie. Yeah, Steve. Shout out to Steve. <laughs> I do want to, I would love to collab with him too. He's, he's so let's get him on the podcast. Yeah, and then he'll, he'll also, he'll also collab with you. Let's, let's make it all happen. Yeah, that'd be tight. But, uh, yeah. So I started, or I posted a couple of videos when I was a freshman and they didn't really take off. And, you know, like things go, I got a little unmotivated, but this is a chance for me to help you guys. Cause that's part of YouTube. Like you think ever, you're not going to go viral right off the bat. You're not going right, to get right, right. So don't, don't be like me. Keep going. Yeah. And I wish dude, I'm kicking myself for not continuing when I quit. Um, but luckily I had life experiences. I did some things. I, uh, wouldn't, I, you know, I had college, uh, I went and lived in Italy. And when I lived in Italy, I really uh, had some experiences and I was just like, you know what, when I get back, I'm just going to go for this thing and I'm not going to stop until it works out. Even if it takes me five years, 10 years, I'm going to keep going until this can be like my, my job, my career. And that's what I did. And luckily it took off a lot quicker than I expected it to. So uh, about six months into it, I was able to quit my job at a uh, Texas roadhouse. Ooh, Texas roadhouse, baby steaks. Do you like steak? I, I like steak. I, I don't mean, fuck with steak. Man. You don't fuck with steak? Nah, man. I, I was like a I was, trap. I was like, I was hey, kinda, man, do you like steak? I was kind of like, afraid because everybody like love, everybody's so vegan? hard for steak. No, everybody <laughs> loves, dude, everybody loves steak. And I'm, I just, I think it's okay. You know, it's like, dude, it's kind of, I, I like variety. You know, that's why I like burgers and stuff like that. Because you got, you got bread, you got cheese, you got burger. You but got bro, but bro, I'm lettuce, gluten free, tomato, man. Shit. And I'm really? dairy free. And dude, you're just, I actually, uh, dude, you're uninvited. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, no, hey, that's I, cool, man. No, I, I fuck with bread. Wait, I, you're, you're gluten free, you said? So I try to be gluten free. <clears throat> Why? Um, just it, I feel like it, it makes me very inflammatory. Like, I always feel like I, I, I I'll get a stomachache. Actually, I think it's in my fucking mind. You know what? I'm going to go eat a bag of. Well, you're not, you're not like baguettes. a celiac, though. Nah, nah. Okay. I thought I was at one point. Really? Why? Okay, so after my sophomore year of college, uh, I had. These things going on, my gut issues, um, lethargic, yeah. And I was, I was just like, what the hell is going on? And one of the things I suspected was that I was a celiac and couldn't yeah. eat gluten. But what it turned out to be was just really bad anxiety. Um, no but shit. I, you know, I'm. I always thought I was so mentally strong. I was like, this can't like. So you have a lot of anxiety. Uh, not any, not anymore. But I did. Um, you don't have any anxiety anymore. Um, I have, I have little, little spurts here and there, but um. I, I, I'm I'm so happy because now I can realize it for what it is. I'm like, because I used to think, fuck, I'm dying. I yeah, literally yeah, thought yeah. I had cancer. Yeah. Because I'm so I I was always so mentally strong that I'm like, there's no way. It's got to be physical, but anxiety can affect you in so many different oh ways. Oh my gosh. Ways that you would never expect. Like, um, I I would have twitching in my arms and legs and stuff and my belly. So I thought I had an autoimmune disease. You know, I yeah. have a. Uh, ALS or whatever. And so I actually went and had MRIs, 
this, that, and the other. Went to a doctor several times. And nothing. Yeah, I mean, they're like, dude, you're you really you are you are the perfect male yeah, specimen. You're the perfect Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> you so you it, must you must have two thousand matches. Yeah, you must have two thousand plus <laughs> matches, not just two thousand plus. But okay, okay, that that's actually really cool for people to actually hear that you're human. That's awesome, man. Yeah, for yeah, sure. you're a maverick. I am the Maverick. <laughs> I am the fucking Maverick, Logan Paul. Fuck you, Logan Paul. <laughs> Steal my name. I get so much shit on YouTube. You, you must be a Lo- Logan Paul fan, faggot. All this stuff. It's like, that's my name. Yeah, it's, my, it's my fucking name. <laughs> it dude. Literally, get on my ID. Show you right now. It's yeah. actually my name. But um, that yeah, we were just talking before the podcast started. I was trying. I asked. I asked Brendan here if he had a name for his fans, and he said he kind of didn't really. But um. Whoa, 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 whoa! I did say no, no. Well, I, said you, the, I said the calisthenics fam. Okay, but you said it was kind of dated, and you're kind of yeah, it's it's, it's outdated. Hey, Mike, you can shut okay. that door if you want, bro. Um, but but yeah, like for for me, uh, I, I've had my like my team. What what is yours? Is yours the low gangsters? <laughs> I, could, I, could, I, <laughs> I wish I could. The just Jake ad- Paulers. I wish I could just adopt his twenty million subscribers, <laughs> but <laughs> only it worked that way. But um, no, I the only thing I could think of is the Mavericks, but. Freaking Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah, no, you're that. fucked, man. Yeah, you might as well just, yeah. I, I thought I, maybe. I, I was about to say quit, but definitely shouldn't quit. <laughs> just kill myself. <laughs> just, yeah. change, just change your, no, how about you change your name? Don't kill yourself. That was a joke, guys. That was yes. really a joke. That was a joke. No, yeah, it was a big joke. Don't do that. Yeah, let's not, yeah. Put the knife down. Yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah, like, so let's let, because uh, I have, like, people that are come on here that are, like, you know, suicide prevention and stuff, like, you know, mm, yeah. Yes. I, I, I really, I'm trying to be guys, really, really careful. I, I, I'm, I'm really insensitive, and. I'm sorry. Yeah. Half are the you, stuff I say is joking. Are you truly sorry? Uh, 50%. <laughs> 50%. It's always 50% in a joke. So so what do you call your teammates? Well, because I, I know they're not going to do it because they're watching this right now. So I know that after this, they're going to go out there and live life like they've never lived before. <laughs> So, I don't so who's your team? It. Who's your team? What what do you call them? Well, I, I don't know. I don't have a name. That's what I was going to ask you for. Help me Ooh. out. But I was thinking like, Maybe Maverick Mob. How about the Mavers? Mavers? The Mavs. Mm, Mavs. Eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Dude, you should just call them the Calisex fam. <laughs> you should just call them the, the Create You fam. <laughs> I don't even Advertising, make, baby. I've never made a calisthenics video. They're like, what the fuck what is this? What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll make a new video like, Welcome calisthenics crew, or what do you call them? Calisthenics crew? <laughs> no, it's called the Calisthenics. So I have a brand, a business yeah. called Cal. Aesthetic, so it's oh. aesthetic. So I I made my own little scup of the boo boo, and I made it into the calisthenics. You know, okay. so so it's calisthenics. Fans. So you can use it, yeah, totally. I'll totally just make it. a video where I'm like trying calisthenics. Just like put my link in your bio. Fall, falling on my ass, they're like, dude, what? The <laughs> fuck? It's okay. <laughs> when I first started, I literally fell on my ass doing a muscle up. So it's totally cool. But the second one though, the second one though, that shit was juicy. That second muscle up, I was like, mm. I was like, yeah, I'm it a body. You, it only busy. took you two tries. Yeah, I was like, yo, I'm an expert. It, me- <laughs> it took you two tries <laughs> legit the second yeah fuck but Te- dude can you teach me how to do one yeah man i can teach you how to play piano too just really? give me two tries <laughs> <laughs> i need to learn it first <laughs> no no yeah dude i can teach you in, in a second okay oh yeah a muscle up dude yeah Put you're like almost fast you're almost like yo can we stop doing this right now and go <laughs> like teach me how to fucking muscle up. <laughs> he started doing a little muscle up like i actually just went over there someone else is teaching him remember mike and uh, Mike went over there, and uh, I was like, "Here, dude, no, you have to. It's this path. It's all about, dude, bro. You know Momentum. the approach. You know the approach of like relationships and women and stuff. You know, you, you, you no. do the whole shebang. Yeah, no, of course, I Tinder. Know, I don't know anything. Tinder about. pro. <laughs> uh, you should be a gold carded Tinder pro. You know the black. You know the black card for Visa. <laughs> you should be like the black card holder of Tinder. I want to get verified on Tinder. Yeah, that'd be incredible. I'd probably rather be verified on Tinder than Instagram. <laughs> Actually, no. Nah, dude, nah, nah. Dude, just kidding. You do know that, like, you could have an extra 2,000 followers, right? What if, do you mean? Like, from Tinder. You could literally just build your Tinder oh. <laughs> to just get followers. People do that. Girls do that. Cloud chasers do that. That's fucking genius. They just put their, they're like, go follow me. Or, like, this is what they say. They say, uh, don't get on here much. Go send follow. me my, yeah. oh, yeah, you go follow me bastards. Go follow I, me I'm the guy that messages you. <laughs> you. You bastard. You fall for that shit? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. No, I don't. I don't. Rookie move. No, no, I don't, man. I'm a professional. <laughs> a professional. I, I knew you were better than Yeah. Me. I create me at all times. Good. Yeah. I create me. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. People do the weirdest shit for clout. Do anything for clout. Well, like, why do you think that? Why do you think they fucking. 
clout, what, clout. Where does it come from? Well, you know, we're in a new new day and age where clout is currency. Mm. And what do you mean by that? If you have a following, you could do get anything, money, uh, you could get access to women, bars, clubs, events. Um, do you think it comes hotels. from insecurity? What? All of this this clout chasing. Part of it is for sure, but there are there's a handful of people that, like me myself, I really don't care about fame or anything like that. I just want to live a better life. And if you have a following, you can most of the time do that. It'll help. So It'll hold help. on, hold on. So you want to just live a better life? What it's, does that mean? What do you mean by that? Um. Like you, you want more Oreos in your life, double stuffed, oh, or like what, what is it, man? Do you want Reese's? Did what you, the fuck? I actually eat a sleeve of Oreos, double stuffed, every day. Oh, stop. I'm dead serious. Stop. I'm dead Dude, serious. Dude, that's why you have fucking gut issues, man. That's why you have anxiety. <laughs> Bro. I, no, like, that was two you, years you ago. Should, you should probably put that in your Tinder bio. Like, I eat a sleeve of fucking double stuffed Oreos. <laughs> come come, come, mess with me. I have anxiety because of it. <laughs> perfect male spit. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> But yeah, man. Um, what we're we talking about? Yeah, like girls, girls like, and clout, and stuff like, like clout and stuff. Like, wh- but but like, what is your purpose behind your social and your and YouTube and all of that? It's a a culmination of things. Um, I think one of the greatest feelings in life is helping people, and the fact that I get paid off of that is fucking is amazing. Crazy. Is amazing. Wow, yeah. you're really good at looking into the camera, piercing, piercing, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate hey. it, brother. Now just do an ad right Order. there. To give a little ad to the Create You agency. Go ahead. Or sorry, the Create You Experience. <laughs> Wait, am I doing an ad for Create You? Yeah, ready, go. What what am I Create You Experience? Ready and get someone to subscribe now. Go. How would you like to join the biggest growing podcast in the universe? Well then come on to Create You where you will do that. <laughs> 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 I think people just blocked my podcast, bro. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm only good at promoting brands, yeah, okay. products. Speaking of that, I have a gift for you. Okay, would you me, like to receive it? Yeah, man, brother. It's probably not going to make a lot of sense to you. Just give me the fucking gift, would you? <laughs> give me the gift. People who people who follow me, they'll get it. Okay, it's just a little something. It's nothing big. Nothing big. Okay. I, right. Sorry, I didn't have time to. Can wrap I? It uh, yeah, majestically. It's cool, man. All right. So, t- skincare for men, bro. Thank you so much. It's kind of a meme on my page. My skin is fucked up. No, it's not. I know. But people, you know, it's kind of a meme. I don't know if you heard Dude, of it. Dude, you really don't think my skin's fucked up? Not really. It's getting better. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, you don't have like acne and shit and it's pretty, you know, clean. Okay. Yeah. No, I clean it. I just have no clue how to freaking truly take care of it. Like I, I don't, I don't know this stuff. So okay. well, every I, guy needs a, every guy needs an acne regimen or a skincare regimen. And so you, you have, have a skincare one. regimen. Well, yeah, they're they're like my skincare brand that I promote, like every oh, month. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a meme. Oh. It's kind of like a meme on my page. It's you know? very like, interesting that so, you're coming in here and you're like, you know what, man? Here's a gift promotion. Take my code. No, <laughs> but you seriously, out of that, okay. Huh? So, Tej Hanley, is it like is it good product to put on my face? Like, is it organic I'm or anything? Right now, man. Is it it's cool? Yeah. Okay. So we have so we have that. Also, part. I just have like uh like sixty of these. Can so you I'm not like, fucking say that, I dude? Almost, How is it a gift? Now <laughs> a fucking gift. You're like, hey man, yeah, here's a gift. By the way, I have 150 Fine. of fucking these at home. <laughs> Can I have it back, please? <laughs> okay, so we I, sh- I wish I would have. I almost brought two. I would have brought one from Mike too. Oh, but shit. Wait, we have man. teeth. Ooh. Teeth whiteners. So are these like, are these okay for your? So, hydrogen peroxide, death, <laughs> PVP, <laughs> steroids. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Um, is this good? Acid. Is, is this good for me? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, you just chew it up and eat it. And <laughs> don't fucking tell you me. put the other one up your nostril <laughs> on the inside. No, and then you go on Tinder. <laughs> well, hey man, cool. So Ollie whitening strips. Thank you so like much, Chris, man. Christmas, and then, man. bro, those are teeth whitening strips, dude. Are... You, you shouldn't have. Man. <laughs> you shouldn't have. He got me extra long lasting flavor, classic bubblegum. Hey, your breath really smells, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said it, not me, dude. Thank you. Seriously. But, yeah, that's kind of a meme on my page too. Because so should I not chew it? No, or... you should. No, dude. Fuck oh, thanks, brother. Sh- Chew Thank you, ones. brother. I really appreciate yeah. that. But um, yeah, I did a video where I chewed a pack of gum every day for a month. A pack. Yeah, a whole pack. How how and this, fucked this up is the are your type, teeth? This man. is the type of gum I chewed. How fucked up are your teeth though? Like like, do you have freaking? Are your gums like about to fall out of your? No, sugar free, dude. <laughs> sugar free, dude. My teeth are prized. You did not just say that. Fuck, dude. Okay, so it's good for you. No, man. Cleans your teeth too. <laughs> Oh, you're fucking going for it? Yeah, yeah like man. On the, on the Come on, you want one? On the podcast? You want one? Here, take one, bro. Is that you? Yeah. yeah no, you're, it's cool. Extra gun. Wow. 
I didn't know this, but like inside you have extra gum.com. I'm probably going to spit it out because it's going to show up. Like people are going to hear it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to taste it. This is good, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my favorite gum right now. Yeah, bro. Spit it out. Heard that before. <laughs> oh, my, oh my Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. This is a G rated podcast. No, bro. Is here, it actually? Here, you try to keep it like cool? No, I try and fucking curse okay. all the time. Here, spit this shit up. Anyways. So, all right. Thank, bro, thank you for the gifts. I got some all. Dude, you're the first person so far on the podcast that is like this nonchalant. This is like, this is, I enjoy this shit, man. I'm a sweetheart. What can I say? Oh, gosh. What'd you do to your throat? He gets a, I freaking, I, a bear. You slamming in a door? No, a bear freaking bit me. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do, man? I'm, li- I'm living in Denver, Colorado. I'm running. So check this out. This is the story. So I'm driving up the mountains. I a see bear, a bear. Like, like a gay dude? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm going to tell you the freaking story. So I'm driving my Jeep. I'm driving up. I'm driving up the hill. Mm-hmm. I'm in the foothills now. So I'm like in Golden. I guess that's that's what Golden is, right? So I see a bear. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a bear. There's a bear in like in Golden. I was I was mind blown. It's like right like near the trees. I'm like, okay, I need to go see what the bear is doing. What the bear is like, why it's even there, right? So I get out. Like you do. So I park on the side of the of the road and I get out. I start running towards it. I don't know why I was running towards it. But I put my hands up like this. I was like, ooh, ooh. And I started just running at it. And the bear, I thought, was going to be very nice about it. Why like, do I like, not believe this like, story Like, what's up, brother? How are you, brother? And then uh, he started chasing me. And I was like, okay, that's very interesting. I was chasing him. Now he's chasing me. And then I was running away from my car, which didn't make any sense. Mm. I tripped. Yeah, you I fell. The I rolled. A squirrel came, jumped on my head. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? There's a, there's a squirrel jumping on my head. And then the bear almost got my foot. All right. I believed it, up, I believed it all up until that point. What the fuck, Brett? I was telling a freaking brother. <laughs> so, so all that happened is uh, it got slammed doing some weight training. <laughs> oh fuck! I've been there before. Who do you think would win in a fight, Hulk Hogan or a child bear? Because <laughs> well, uh, you Khabib. keep saying it, you keep Khabib. saying brother. Khabib. Oh yeah, Khabib for sure would win a fight. <laughs> Maybe a baby bear. A baby? You know what I heard? What? What'd I heard mean? Mike Tyson. Uh. When he he was like super high because he did a lot of drugs back in the day, he <laughs> was at a zoo and he is this researched by the way that that he did a bunch of drugs back in the day. How do you Dude. know he doesn't do drugs now? Hey, I I don't know. I feel like he changed. <laughs> he seems like a good dude, yeah. but uh, he he offered a zookeeper ten thousand dollars to let him fight a gorilla. D- oh what? Oh that's right. You know what? Wait, he he fought a gorilla. No, he didn't fight him. He offered the zookeeper ten thousand dollars. To let him fight the gorilla, and he was like, mm, "No, you'll die. It'll be bad. <laughs> Very I bad. think Tyson was just a little <laughs> loony at the time. I, yeah, he still he definitely has some wiring issues. Well, 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 well uh, no, it, dude, I he's mean, been hitting the he's been hitting the head. We love you, like, Mike Tyson, dude. Come like, on the show. He's literally been hitting the head a million times. What do you expect? Well, he started doing drugs when he was like eleven or something, like Are you serious? ecstasy and shit. Yeah. Oh my! Have you ever done ecstasy? No. Have you ever done Molly? No. Have you ever done? pre-workout <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> nah, <I don't. laughs> have you ever done any drugs um yeah like well what? i mean not really i'm not like you know i've smoked weed that. a little bit you know here and there but, but I, I, it, it, yeah, it's not for me it makes me like paranoid about shit and i just go off my observation that people who do a lot of weed aren't very productive you don't think so no why do you think that well you're from colorado yeah I mean, I, I mean, you've experienced it a lot. That's kind of what I. That's like what you observed. You're, it's your and observed. even if you just go to the uh, dispensaries, you go in there, dude. You're like, where the fuck am I? Yeah. Do you know what, man? I I've I've met a lot of people that have do a lot. Why do you smoke weed? No, not mm, not really. No. So well, I haven't well, smoked why in a while. Are you, why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Because I like to keep an open mind, brother. Oh, okay. Jeez. And I did cocaine once. Oh, how was sorry, that? Sorry, mom. How did that feel? Don't watch. Uh, it felt like drinking. Four cups of coffee. Really? Yeah. I was really drunk. Did you run too. through a wall? No, but I was definitely acting a fool, though. Dude, if I did a cocaine, I would literally be like, cl- you would see me at the top of the fucking downtown climbing. That's the another thing I, I remember is I didn't fear anything. Oh, God. You don't fear anything. Dude, th- th- that would, I'm telling you right now, I like, already I just do remember, handstands. I was looking place. around, and I was like, I could kick the shit out of anybody. <laughs> I was like, if anybody tries me. And, so, and then, and then, yeah, but oh, then you get in a fight oh. and then you get hit by four different angles. <laughs> Dude, I, dead. I think even if you get hit on cocaine, you, you it wouldn't going. feel it. You won't feel it. I feel like this is not a good uh, Don't like, do benefit of like, <laughs> like, hey guys, by the way, you can accomplish anything on cocaine. 
And <laughs> no, 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 don't do, don't fucking do drugs. Clearly you don't do drugs because like, where does that come from? Like in all seriousness, like you not wanting to put anything in your body that's going to affect it in a negative way. Where does that come from? I don't know. How's your, how's your relationship with your mom? It's good. That's, that's part of it. My upbringing was, you know, pretty strong. And how's your dad? He's great. He's wonderful. You have a good relationship with both of them? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I was just raised well. I mean, I just, I've observed and I've observed how things lead to one from one to the other with drugs, especially. I don't believe for a second that weed isn't a gateway drug. Everybody that I know that's on heart, that does harder drugs, they started with weed. Yeah. Um, believe what you want, but that's. It's an opinion. So, so guys, if, if you're listening or watching right now, like in all seriousness, like a lot of the, the stuff you got to remember is that uh, people are, always have their own opinions. This is my unlicensed professional opinion. Right. And, and each opinion has its own right and its own. <laughs> that's what people don't think. That's some, that's a crazy misconception about YouTube. People like nobody knows anything for sure. Everything you hear, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. 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 I, I, I won't say everywhere. Let's not, let's not use a generalization term because like there is stuff that's proven. Right. Yeah. But if, if it's something that's not factual then right right it's an opinion. yeah like it's an opinion and yeah. you don't have, like you can debate with people but like to get pissed off and say like this or that see what, what what i don't like about youtube this is the only thing i don't like about youtube is people that go on there and spread a negative message or they bring their opinions so strongly onto the community that it affects like kids lives and they either like they get they start developing things that are just not good for society or for themselves long term and like, have you ever seen that before? Have you ever seen anyone like posting about like they do stupid shit or like they don't treat people right or they think it's cool to just go fuck with someone? Like, you know, you know what I mean? What is your opinion on that? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't be too mad at people for saying what they want, especially if they believe it. Like, I can't be mad at you because if you actually believe that shit. But if you're if you're spreading something that you know is not true. Then I have a problem with like that. Like the fake pranks. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. literally going up to people and doing shit to them. Yeah, yeah. Like, would you do that? Would you just go up to someone and pull their pants down? No, dude. That's fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like, that's <laughs> the type of shit that I just don't, I, I do not mess with. I don't fuck with. Like, Do anything for clout. Yeah, it's the clout. Like, yeah. like iCloud, man. Do anything for iCloud. Do you have iCloud? Doesn't every iPhone have iCloud? Or no? Brother. <laughs> do you have iCloud or not? I don't know. I don't know shit do you about have Android. Do you have Android? <laughs> no. Are you, a, are you an Apple guy? I'm not a peasant. Oh god. I'm just playing guys. Oh gosh. You're aggressive, bro. I just like to have fun. You're very aggressive. Like, okay, guys, just know that he's just trying to have fun. Half the shit I say is joking. Oh. And except ex- satirical. So on camera, it's more joking. But I think you just need to, you are you the type of person that you warm up to people? Mm, yeah for sure yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you're like you you analyze a lot too right you like pick up on mm-hmm. a lot of different things yeah. clearly that's why you like a lot of like you have a lot of maybe passions you could call them you have a lot of interests yeah 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 i mean why what have you what have you observed with me am i more open on camera than off or is it oh yeah no you fuck around a lot more on ca- on, on camera than off but also it's I a an- youtuber in me dude but i analyze a lot of different stuff i'm and just I know- thinking about that green circle Oh, there it is. The green What's circle. What's the green fucking circle? What's green, that? The green, dude, the monetization icon. I'm just oh, really? trying to, dude, I'm, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to make you money, dude. I, but I don't need money from this. <laughs> See, there, there I go. I guys. hate to tell you, Brett, man. I don't need money from this, man. <laughs> can I have some money? Yeah, if you want some. Fuck. Hey, I'm going to claim this video then. Uh, you, cool. you can fucking claim whatever you want, bro. <laughs> claim all your videos. I, I don't know that. <laughs> Good. I probably, well, every single day I get a new freaking something pops up and like, oh, this music was claimed. And I'm like, I, I got know. this from I got this from a non copyrighted <laughs> website. Like, what is this? Welcome like, every to YouTube 2019. Day. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I get gypped everywhere. But like, for that's for, why I use the same three songs over uh, and over again. Yeah, I, <laughs> people are like, Brett, I, I was gonna tell, I was gonna bring that up to you. Like, mm. I, I'm getting pretty annoyed by those same songs. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, and then yeah, no, uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> so so we're bringing the Mavs to the next level with your with your fan and your audience, but. In all seriousness, <clears throat> where do you want to be in the next year, two years? Like, what what is your goal in okay. all everything that you're doing? Um, so I want to follow the same projection as my 
mentors, Alpha M, in teaching men's fashion. I Do you really talk to him at all, doing. or is it more of like a um, inspirational? I don't. I don't follow. I don't. I don't talk to Alpha M very much um, because he's just so crazy busy, and I don't think he's as a uh, social media involved as a lot of us. But I do te- talk to talk, talk. I do talk to Jose from Teaching Men's Fashion quite Who's often. Who's that? Uh, he's he does the same type of videos as me and or uh, sorry, Alpha M and I. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, he's. I think he he's almost at like four million. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, he lives in Miami. He's really cool. Really, really awesome dude. He's a cool um, dude. Yeah, one of those one of the few YouTubers who. What do you come on here? What do you come on the podcast? I think so. Yeah. Um, the only problem would be getting him here. Oh, I'll get I'll get him out here. Yeah, I mean he's. He's just he's crazy busy too because he's, cool he's, he's got like four businesses or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually just launched his fifth collection of his clothing brand Essentials today. So oh really? Swipe up. Go check it just out. Kidding. You can't swipe yeah, up. No. Yet. Actually, <laughs> no, you could swipe up. We're in we're in your story right now. Go keep keep going keep going. We're in your story. Okay, Essentials fifth collection. Some great new products. We got hoodies, joggers, Ooh. chinos, underwear, oh. new fabrics, colors, all that shit. Swipe up and use my code Maverick10 for 10% off. Dude, oh, wow, dude. Dude, that's a fucking gold, man. Jose, pay me, bitch. Yeah, yeah. and Jose, come <laughs> on my podcast, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. That's, that's fucking but awesome. He, yeah, he's like one of, he's one of the, my, I mean, I haven't lo- met a ton of people that blew up and ha- still have a super, super strong um, pre- presence online. But No, but he's, he's, you know, I'm way smaller than him, but he talks to me just like I'm. You're pretty tall, bro. No, I don't mean tall, but like just like presence. You know, he's huge on social media. And he's a great person. Yeah, he's awesome. A lot of a lot of guys are awesome. Also, Alex Costa. Do you know who he is? No, who's he? He's another like style guy. He's got. Dude, like, can you introduce me to all these style guys, man? Because I'm I need to fucking sure. find some for style. Sure, for sure, for sure, bro. for sure. I mean, I do like I do like it. You know, I I, you could, I, I don't dress bad. Good. I don't, I'm kind of like you, man. I'm like, if it looks good, it's cool. But yeah. like a lot of these guys, they study and match this and that. But they love it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they love doing that. Like, yeah, you're more so across the board, and you like to do a bunch of different stuff. So like, I'm, I'm gonna let's get back to what what you where you want to be in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. What is your goal? What's some big goals that you have? Okay, I want a one a okay. Calm down, <laughs> calm down, calm down, brother. I know this is a big one. I want uh I want like my own company. Um, I don't know. What it is yet. A style a style a styling company or. Know. Something, something dude. Well, I, I guarantee you, I can, I can help you brainstorm it, and okay. it, it can come to fruition. Something that I can sure. be passionate about, for sure. Dump my you heart really want to put all of it into it. Yeah. Well, because I'll be out of school, so I. You want I'll, you want people do, you want you want people to represent it. You want ambassadors, maybe people that can really really yeah just, share the message and yeah. equal and vision. I want to <laughs> really get my vlog channel going. That's my main. That's one of my main priorities right now. Um. So you have so many. So how many subs do you have right now? You have like 500k or more than that on on Brett Maverick. Yes, my main channel has about 550,000. Um, my vlog channel only has three videos on it, but it has and it has 3,000 subscribers. Um, but yeah, I just I just want to get uh, more more presence on there. Start pumping out videos on that. Yeah. So I can show a lot more of my uh, personality and stuff. Who you are? Yeah, yeah. Like we we talked about this earlier. Um, the kind of the type of videos we make there a lot. Uh, they're NFL. a lot more information based. Provide so, something. Someone comes to YouTube, they yeah. type it in, and they find it, and it goes viral sometimes. Yeah, and it's difficult to. Um, it you you never know what people are going to be interested, in, what they're not going to be interested. Well, you kind of know, but you don't for sure. Right. Like for me, sometimes I think I have a killer video, and it gets like twenty thousand views, which is shit for half a million subscribers. And then sometimes I'll post a video that I don't know if it's going to do very good, and it gets three million or something. Um, so I want to get my vlog channel going. So it's just a lot more consistent and people yeah. can see who I really am. That's when you're doing the info based videos, it's a lot more difficult to just to put a lot of your personality into that and to be, you can be authentic, but it's hard to, it's not who you really are in, in real life. Like right, right, in right. real life, I'm not trying to teach you, you know? Yeah. All the time. So, you're like more laid back. You're like, yeah. Hey, you make some jokes, yeah, you yeah. enjoy your time. You hang bros out. Yeah. 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 I want to have some adventures. I'm going to do all kinds of crazy stuff on my vlog channel. And I would love for all of you to join. Yeah. Me. D- yeah. Definitely check them out. Yeah. Brett Maverick. You can look them up on like the vlogs and everything. So like, let, let me ask you, man, cause you said you want to build something. You just don't know what it is. Let's fucking, let's, <clears> let's, 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 let's explore right now, man. Because I think it's it'll be really cool for you to see a clearer vision on here on the experience, and that's what like. Well, I have one idea, but I don't, I don't know if I want to share it or not. I don't know if I, is that a bad idea. No, no. Some, is someone going to steal it? Don't steal it. 
Well, dude, by the time by the time this is released, we already have your business up and <laughs> you like how I said that we mm, <laughs> <Yeah>. fucking clever <laughs> motherfucker I am. This no, guy. we already have your business up and running, and you're making a lot of money. You're helping a lot of people. Stop. Okay. No, but ser- ser- seriously, like, what are some ideas? I'll just say this. I'll I'll just say this. A lot of my popular videos have to do with increasing your facial structure and in particular your jawline. So I would like to make a product that does that helps with that. Jawline. Something not not jaws or size though. Do you believe in jawline shit? Yes. You do. A lot of it, yeah. Dude, exercise physiologists would like want to spar you right now. Well, no, it's okay. I'm not a physiologist, but the, it's it's anatomy. You you have muscles right here called your masseter muscles, and it's a muscle, so it can grow. And if you develop it, it'll grow, and it'll make your jawline widen. You truly believe in that? I uh, yes, for sure. I can't, I can't say that I do or don't. I'm just going to say that. One thing that I will say, though, is that um, it's actually can attribute the, the, the stronger this muscle is and the more used it is, it can actually contribute to a lot more health problems because this is like just like TMJ, for instance. When mm-hmm. you have TMJ, you can have blurred vision. You can have a lot of headaches. Go ahead. That's something that I wanted to research. Uh, research, yeah. Yeah, I guess research, that's probably the best word. But when I did my 30 day challenge of eating gum every day, I was like, is this gonna fuck up my jaw? Am I gonna get headaches and shit? And nothing happened and I'm good for now. But take that with a grain of salt because I know that that does exist, but it didn't happen with me. Right. And and I literally chew 10 pieces of gum a day. Yeah, and, and it's, and been, it's and watermelon. It's, and it's and been like four it's, months. It's 10 pieces of watermelon gum. So you know that shit's the banger. It was bubble gum. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Well, that, no, that's what you're chewing. It's called bubblegum. So anyway, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, see, this is the thing. So Austin Dunham, you're friends mm. with him as well. He, he got like so much hate and backlash for it. And he was just coming from a place of like, hey, I believed in it. Like, I, I just thought that whatever. And he started learning more about it. And I think now, I'm, I, I don't want to speak for him. I never want to speak for anyone, but from what I gathered is like from his experience, he was like, Oh yeah, well I didn't know all this stuff that comes from like, Mm -hmm. well, the thing is that it's so under researched. There's never, there hasn't been. Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. I could there's not, there's like not very much at all. So it's, so at this point, anybody that has an opinion one way or the other, it's not extremely credible. Yeah. You should just speak to a, and I say that in my videos, you just speak to a, speak to someone that like, that really understands the anatomy of the body and then just fucking test the product. Like that's all you do. You have yeah. to do. And then either way it'll blow up. Like either way it'll make a lot of money. Um, I'm always on the ethical side and I really like to make sure that everyone is taken care of, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they know that they can trust the, mm-hmm. the long-term vision of the business. Mm-hmm. And that's why like when I think of you, I think of, Hey bro, why are you not building an entire styling company? Like a company that like literally provides different types of products all the way from skincare to even a little bit of clothing to um, like hauls, like, like really representing what you like, all these things that you, that encompass you all in one. Like you can hold all of this stuff on a site, on like a, on a really cool under, under umbrella company. Like you could, you could have a, a membership and you could have all of these things under it where like you go through like it's Tinder Friday, right? And like you go through whatever, and then like there's Every shit. Every th- Friday is Tinder Friday, bro. I can come up with a million <laughs> fucking ideas for you if you want. But the but the fact of the matter is, to build a reoccurring model that mm-hmm. you know that it's always there every single month, and people are enjoying it, and generally teenagers going into their into their twenties, right? That's really where you wanna where you wanna target. I would I would see that's a big demographic, and then also you can offer products for. Middle-aged men, you can offer products for people that are in their 20s or even going into the 30s. So there's so much you can do, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you have, you have something mm-hmm. that is lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Lifestyle is gold. Mm-hmm. And if you're ethical about it and you care about people and you're bringing their visions to life, the money is way bigger than you could ever imagine. Like so fucking big. Like Alpha M, what he does is genius. Mm. It's fucking genius. And he has like yeah, subscriptions. That dude, could, that dude has, could sell ice to an Eskimo. But but here's the thing is that he like he's he's big into marketing. He's really big into marketing. So he understands the game, but he's also really fucking good with social media. Is it bothering your ears, bro? No, I just want to make sure my hair is on there. Your hair's so perfect, man. 
Thank this you. is going to be on uh, you, Tinder sweetheart. Friday in the uh, <laughs> membership. Just sign up now for $7 a month. No, but like, yeah. So you have lower priced, a lower priced item per month and you provide things and they know they're always going to get it. And you can make videos <clears> there and you can make PDFs and you can make release certain things that get them excited. And then they see that you're doing it and like they're learning each time each week, mm -hmm. but they don't want to leave because there's so many different things, right? They also get discounts to certain products. Maybe you start releasing your own product, but you can only buy it in the membership for a certain price. Mm -hmm. And then you move that and you start selling it to your entire team, you know, so like, <coughs> or to your whole following. So mm -hmm. you see where I'm getting at? Like, I see it. How many, Is like, this fun for you guys though? I guarantee you it's fun. You think so? Okay. They're I'll hearing it. Okay. No, bro. Like, here's the thing. People want to fucking make money mm -hmm. and they want to help people. People do want to help people. And actually they want to help themselves, but they want to help people as well. Yeah. When you can connect with that, it takes you to the next level. Trust me. Like, there's a reason why people fucking love Gary Vee. Yeah. He's a go-getter. He's a hustler. But at the same time, he helps people, and he comes in with so many nuggets. So someone's listening to this right now. They're like, oh, shit. <coughs> I could build something like this. Or, like, I could talk to someone about building something like this. You know what I mean? And it's like, why the fuck wouldn't you want to hear about how to build a business? True. How many, how many people want to be entrepreneurs? You know? A lot. Like you wanted to be a YouTuber. That's an that's an entrepreneurial yeah. way of or path that you've taken. For sure. So if you want to go back to bullshitting around, I can bullshit around all day. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm I can. Fine. No, I can. What's like, if if what okay, if there is three tags for Brendan Myers, what would it be? Three, three hashtags. Three hashtags? Yeah. Hashtag um vulnerable. Hashtag real as fuck and hashtag let's get that money. I love it. I love it. <laughs> wait, wait. Hashtag help people. Fuck. That's great. Gosh, damn. That's great. What brings you the most? So I was telling you this earlier. I think one of the best feelings in the world is helping someone. What do you think is the best feeling in the world? Oh, it's when it's when I, so I partner with influencers. I told you this, mm -hmm. uh, many of them. And when they're working a dead end job, mm-hmm. And we get in contact and they're maybe in a rough time in their life, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And well, there's two different feelings. I, I want to mm -hmm. give you this one first. And we build their business and they're getting excited, but they're so nervous. Like, I don't know if I want to make money. I don't know if I'm going to make money. I don't know. Like, I really want to help people. I don't want to like do bad by my following, whatever. And then we release. And in the first eight minutes, when they see our account, the bank account, and it's just, <laughs> and they're like, this what is this like oh my gosh i like they're speechless and they're smiling and they're happy they're like wow i don't need to work that dead-end job anymore i can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and i can help so thousands and thousands of people that's a beautiful dude that is like the most incredible feeling because in the process i know that i'm a part of the vision of yeah. transforming thousands of lives with them yeah and that's beautiful and then also when someone hits me up and they're depressed or they're, they're feeling like they want to kill themselves. That's why like, I, I am big into suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. um, that's why when you said like, oh, kill myself, whatever, I, I said something about it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you were fucking around. But when someone comes to me and they're like, you saved my life. Mm -hmm. You literally, because I've done it. Hundreds of people, man. Hundreds of people have saved their lives. Either that or they're like, I'm depressed. And like, whenever I watch your videos, I'm no longer depressed. Mm -hmm. That right there is like, yeah. Like just blows up any self doubt about, about what, what I do or why I do it. Mm -hmm. What, what is it for you? So that kind of goes, goes back to the helping thing. Um, yeah, well, it's people think that it's all about money and clout and it is no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on you. motherfucker. <laughs> I think there's three things that will bring you the most happiness. One is helping people. There's no greater feeling than that. Two is personal growth. So learning a new instrument, learning a new business technique, learning a language, um, gaining muscle. Progression. Progression. And three is, for me, admiration from your peers. When people that you respect, respect you back. Acknowledgement. And show that, show that acknowledgement. That's a great feeling. Damn. Dude, that was a gold. That was fucking gold, man. Because that's so true. It's like 
the things that we think like what we need is validation. Yeah. We think what we need is the money. Mm-hmm. What we think is like the validation comes with that, all that stuff. It's like the money, it's the followers, it's the like, it's the, it's the, uh, people talking about you a little bit in mm-hmm. a good way. It's really none of that. Mm-hmm. It's really self growth stuff. It's mm-hmm. like progression within ourselves. Like how am I speaking to people? Am I, are the communications that I have in my life? Great. Yeah. Uh, am I seeing other people transform because of me as well? Mm-hmm. You know, am I being a uh, stepping stone for others? You know, like that's yeah. the type of stuff, man. 100%. Damn. Um, yeah, that's why I try to be really careful about what I put out there. Um, but then again, this is YouTube, man. And sometimes people ask of me, Brett, how do I do this? I, don't know, fuck. I gotta go find out. I gotta like go teach myself. Yeah. yeah. That, that goes back to like, not everybody knows everything. So, um, that, that's true, dude. Yeah. And that, that, that's the thing is like, don't think that every YouTuber knows what the fuck they're talking yeah. about all the time. Because look, like we are learning just like you're learning. Like I, I didn't just pull. I'm a, I'm a teacher, but I'm still a student. Yeah. Still a student. And you're literally, no, no, you're, you're graduated. <laughs> One like, we'll, more week, baby. We'll, Let's we'll, go. We'll know because we, we're already, this is, this is recorded and it's released at a certain time. Ah, okay. Man. Well, right now. You just ruined the present time. Like, <laughs> pretended like I just filmed it yesterday. Now I fucking fil- I filmed it a long time. <laughs> we filmed it in the future. In the future. Woo. Woo, woo, Spooky. Woo. Woo. Yeah, go sign up for his uh, new membership site now. We <laughs> built it. <laughs> Which no, was built 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> Styling. Yeah. So, so, okay. So a couple of years from now, you want to have your own company. You really want to like put some, some of these ideas out there. Yeah. Do you know what it takes, man? Kinda. Do you want me to fucking tell you what it takes? Right now? Let me give you some Okay. Some of these some of these things that tell it takes. Me. Just so you can prepare yourself. Should I write this down? No. I'll you just can watch, watch I'll watch the video later. Yeah. So like people will really enjoy this part. Good. To build a business, a successful long term business. I'm not talking about a six month this or a six month there stint. I'm talking about five years. So I had but calisthetics still running. Five years. Like to build a business long term, consistency. Consistency is literally more than your best friend. It's your fucking mom and your dad. You're in love. In love till mm-hmm. death. Like even then, it doesn't, it doesn't waver at all. Mm-hmm. Like consistency is your fucking best friend. Number two is communication. Communication, if you don't have it, if you struggle with it, if you can't communicate in any way, shape, or fashion, in this instance, that instance, in this business deal, in this hiring, in this program that you're releasing, in this project management, your business is going to suffer again and again and again. You're going to fucking lose money again and again and again. So communication, I'm serious, is even bigger than, than consistency. 100%. 100%. I'm, I, bad at I, I, I'm telling you, like, literally everything. A text message. How you talk to the people that are working for you. Yeah. Every, a call. Do you call back? Do you arrive on time? If you don't arrive on time, did you tell your whole team why you didn't arrive on time? Mm -hmm. So so it's communication. Number three is responsibility. You are responsible for anything and everything that happens with that company. I have 11 people on my uh, my team. Mm -hmm. I own many companies. Mm -hmm. I take responsibility. Yeah. But I hold other people accountable. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. I am... The, the caretaker. I am the person that pays the checks big or, daddy or gives the Brennan. checks. I'm big daddy Brendan, baby. <laughs> okay. So like it's taking responsibility. I'm so serious. If you don't take responsibility and you're the type of guy that's like, Oh, why the fuck didn't you do this? Oh, why didn't you, why weren't you on time mm. rather than, Hey, what happened? And really asking and coming from a, a really low and soft point of view where like, it's also from their point of view. Yeah. It, like it, it's, I'm telling you, Business will suffer again. I, I know this from experience. I've built so many businesses and I've seen f- so many fail. I've had an app that was $27,000. The communication was horrible with the company that I was working with and it fucking suffered. And I, and I spent $27,000 and never released anything. So responsibility. Yeah. Number five is what? Oh, you kind of just answered that. I was going to say, what was your biggest mistake? Just not taking on the responsibility. Communication. Okay. 100% and responsibility. Those two okay. things is what I've learned over, over the years is that one, I used to blame everyone. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? 
But in actuality, like I'm the one that built the business. Like I, st- well, not built. I started the business. Everyone around me is like my, they're all my partners. This is actually just another huge point. But like, it was me just not showing up in that way to communicate with someone and understanding them because I was so cold. I was like, I could do everything. Why the fuck can't you do it at this speed? But mm-hmm. you can't hold everyone to the same standard that you're at. Yeah. No one holds the vision as strongly as you do. Except for me, here's the difference between me and other people that partner with businesses. When I partner with a business, I fucking believe in it so much. And like, I believe in the person so much. And that's why the vision is so strong yeah. because there's two people that believe in it. So I believe in it even more than some of the people that I partner with, like mm-hmm. real shit. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of it. So one thing that I would say is that when it comes to building the business is that when everything is hitting the fan, when things are rough and you can stay calm the entire time, yeah, that's gold. You made it. You fucking made it. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter if you lose a thousand dollars. I've lost a hundred thousand dollars. Real shit. I've lost a hundred thousand dollars like, Ouch. like this. And when, when I did, I, I, there's something that I could do. I could freak the fuck out and I could scream and yell and, and blame this person. Or I could look at it as like, okay, this is a learning experience. How, what can I do to evolve from here? So it's these type of things, man. When you lead, when you build a business, you fucking lead. Like if you are not in that way, like a leader in that way, partner with someone, allow them to lead, Mm -hmm. allow them to really be the CEO of that business. That doesn't make you any less. That doesn't make you any worse. It doesn't make you a hustler. It doesn't make you passionate. It doesn't, no, it's just, hey, I trust this other person and we're living the vision together. Like I have a partner in, in my Create You Agency, mm-hmm. really close friend of mine, Este. He's a great guy, great, great guy. He's been there for me every single second and he might not see the vision as strongly as I do, but he shows up for me and he sees the vision of me. Yeah. And that's important. Right. Any, any more questions about that shit? Like, dude, to run a business is fucking hard. If you cannot do it, either partner with someone or work a nine to five. There's nothing wrong with working a nine to five. There's a reason why they still exist. They're needed. Yeah. People are needed in the workforce. Like, I'm telling you right now, being an entrepreneur, even building a fucking agency is one of the hardest things to do. Having people that you trust when you hire someone, knowing everything about them. Mm-hmm. And knowing their next move and how they, they respond and stuff. Yeah. This shit's fucking, dude, it's hard. Alpha M, man, there's a lot more respect if you saw, if you saw what, what he does. He might be partnered with someone. Mm-hmm. He might be partnered with someone that's killing it for him. Mm-hmm. You don't know. Yeah. You never really know. Yeah. Some people are just the face of it and everyone's like, wow, he's a genius. But the truth is, every, every front-facing guy or girl has a genius right beside them. Yeah, for sure. I have sure. a genius in Este, and I have a genius in my team. Mm-hmm. And when you can trust, bro, this is another thing. I have mm-hmm. so many nuggets for this, man. When you can fucking trust everything. Yeah. Big I'm time. telling you, like, you, tr- all right, you trust once. If they fuck up, okay, I'll give you another try. Trust again, and they fuck up, and it's, it's after the two trusts, and you really trust them, the third one, shame on you. Yeah. Not shame on, not shame on the person, but shame on me. Fool me once. Don't fool me. Right. Fool me <laughs> once. Yeah. Fool me once. It's all good. I'll give you another try. Fool me twice. It's all good. I'll give you another try. Yeah. Fool me the third time. Shame on me. I'm a yeah. fucking idiot. Yeah. No, it's really it comes down to that. Yeah. It just is so funny when um I don't know if you saw it. former President Bush. He tried to say that quote. He like totally Did murdered he? it. He's oh like, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. He's like fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> freaking, freaking bush. Man. I love it. Man. Yo, I, I had this joke with my dad growing up. It was uh, hide under the bush and jump over the bush. So, like we were, <laughs> these are the people that were gonna be, and we would just fucking be driving, and everyone, the whole family's in the car, like even friends and shit. And my dad would be like, hide under the. This is when Bush was in the office, and I was like, the bush. <laughs> and everyone was like, we're like cracking up, and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Yeah. And we're just like, it's an inside just joke, an inside man. Back thing, the man. fuck up. Like, you, come on. This is my this is me and daddy time. You know you know. <laughs> you don't know. So so any other, do you have any other questions? Um, yeah. When you were so all of this uh cultivated from your YouTube channel, right? Is yes. this how this all began? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't try to create any businesses before YouTube? No. Yeah. No. So 
Did so, you were, did you get into the YouTube game when it was monetizable? It was oh before yeah. That. Okay. Yeah yeah yeah. So so I I I, I, can, I can explain. It. I you know I was making like 10k a month from YouTube, 10 yeah. to 12k a month from yeah. YouTube, six figures. Yeah, that's good. I'm not gonna bullshit. I actually never said fucking said anything. Like that. So yeah, like and it, really it was anywhere from five to 12k a yeah. month. That's that's great. Yeah, you, yeah. I just shouldn't. Have. Yeah, you said that. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Yeah. But, but, um, but you know, like, okay. for me, that was like, that was great because I had my business on the side as well. Mm -hmm. Like, when I first started, I didn't understand the business stuff. I partnered with someone and I started learning everything. And that was the beauty of it is that right when I partnered, this is why I always tell anyone, any, any influencer, partner with someone. Partner with them. Learn. Wait, who did you partner with? Like a, like a manager or His something? His name is Jeffro Pierce. Uh, just so, to to do what to get you brand deals and stuff or what? No, 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 no. I, I'm so against brand deals. Like, really? Yeah, I because I think I can create everything for myself. Why would I release a fucking jump rope when I can go build a jump rope? Yeah, but I mean, you know, that's I'm, uh, there's well, a lot more going. Let me say, let, 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 let me say this. Let me say yeah. this, man. I'm against m the majority of brand deals, so I'm going to retract my statement. Okay. And I'm going to adjust it. I'm. So you're not gonna you're not gonna rep my brand when I make it. Yeah, we are. We're because it'll be my <laughs> brand too. No, um, no, no. But for me, for me, it's like when I when I think of a brand, like I really gotta believe in it, like full on. Do I just? I would rather just post about it mm -hmm. than fucking get paid from it because. And this is probably coming from a a, a different, like a, a more of an egocentric mindset. Honestly, I think it's because I take a lot more pride in. Hey, I want to. I would rather create it for myself mm -hmm. than to share someone else's product or whatever for money to get revenue from it because I almost feel like it's it's selfish of me when I could I could literally create it at the best of my ability and know where it's coming from and really trust it 100% and I would yeah, I would yeah. be proud of it yeah that's cool but like, that's one of my mindsets yeah that's cool yeah okay. you you believe in spawn in in, yeah, in sponsor sure. stuff yeah. I mean if, if you <laughs> if I like something but I'm not gonna go create a company to compete with them I'm like yeah fuck it. but this is what I'm gonna say that I want to start, I want to do sponsors here. Like I want to do sponsors yeah. pretty consistently on the Create You Experience, the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like I do believe, here, here's the thing. I don't want to get this misconstrued. I believe in, in, in sponsored, pro, like making sponsors and stuff like that. What I don't believe in, and this is where it gets clouded from the way I present it and I communicate, I mm -hmm. communicate it, is that I, I just, I really want to believe <clears throat> in the product so much. Yeah. And I want to be a part of that vision. Right. And so, I don't want someone to just say, hey, Brennan, just release this. I want them to be like, hey, I, I, we're, we want to create this landing page for you. Mm. And we want to put some email automation behind it and go and put it on your podcast. Yeah. And then like it's, it's, it's helping them because I know that my voice is on, on email as well. And they know that I'm truly a part of it. It's not like I'm just getting a quick buck. Yeah. Well, a lot of, a lot of brands I work with do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like what, 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 like what companies do you, do you work with? Um, all sorts. Uh, Teach Hanley, like the skincare. Um, I do a video for them every month. Vincera watches, which is this. Um, I do one for them almost every month. But yeah, I mean, they all have a landing page that I send them to. I, I, I don't know if they collect emails from that though. That's that would be smart of them if they did. If they have a landing yeah. page and they have emails, they probably do then. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Bro, we need to sit down, and I need to. I I need to tell you a little bit more about this Making this game. So much money, dude. dude here, here's the thing, man. The business game. I know a lot of fucking marketers, a mm. lot of them. And uh, the, the majority of fitness people don't. They don't know health and fitness. They, they don't, health and wellness. They don't really truly know the marketing game mm -hmm. behind things. Everything is, uh, I hate to say it, a trap. Like, like when you go around and you click on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're pixeled, man. Yeah. You're pixeled. And if you type in something on the search bar, we got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you click on this. We gotcha. Mm -hmm. If you went over here, there's a whole ploy behind it. And what I don't like, though, this is what I don't like. This is why I, I'm very careful with the sponsors, mm -hmm. is when people get something, get like an email, get a, get a person's name, get, get uh, someone paying for something that doesn't have a lot of benefits long term from it. You know, like that's it. Because mm. there's so much behind it, man. Because you're hitting, this is how it, this is how it works, bro. Everything's off of pain points, limiting beliefs, your responses, the way you react, how you click that, how quickly you click that, how you're reading the email, how far you read into the email, 
why you're clicking that link and not that link. Why'd you click it here in this sentence and not that sentence? Why, when I said this, you reacted like that? Mm -hmm. Why are you remo leaving the page? I'm just going to put something there so you don't leave the page. Like, dude, everything is a tactic to cut into all of your pain points and to get you to be like, oh my gosh, I fucking hate my life. Oh, I need this. You know what I mean? And so there's an unethical way to do it. And there's an ethical way. The ethical way is not exploiting them, but allowing people to see where they're having trouble in their life and then bringing that benefit to them and curing it. Either curing it or, or giving them the yeah. next step. I mean, tale as old as time. Uh, all av almost all of advertising is playing off of some sort of fear or insecurity. You know, you want to be... Uh, Perceived this way, you need to have this. You right. you don't you want you don't want bad skin, do you? Well, you gotta buy this then. You don't want you know blah blah blah. Right. Buy and this watch, and I I like companies that really but, care about their yeah. their product and their. That's why I asked you, I was like, yo, is this organic or like I asked you like a couple of things about the product. Mm. It's like, you know, Organifi for instance. I just found out they 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 pay like, they have a high fucking cost. What is that? Like Organifi, so it's a greens juice. Oh, okay. So they have like a high cost. They 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 charge like eighty bucks or something like that for the greens juice. For one drink, for the for the for the tub. Oh, it's but like it, a mix. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's a mix. But it's really good, right? Mm -hmm. But they pay a lot of money, a lot of money, like more than I have ever heard about these other companies doing it, to get a really high end quality drink. Okay. And the so cool thing, they they incur a, a high cost of goods sold. Yeah. yeah. So like, I fuck with that. Mm -hmm. I would rather rather pay three dollars more. To make mm -hmm. sure that one ingredient's in there, mm -hmm. then to remove that ingredient and still make the same amount of money. Yeah. Honestly, like. Yeah, that's, gonna... that's that premium product business model, by the yeah. way, guys. Premium. And it's okay to charge higher for those. It is. Because people will pay extra for that. So, that's, dude, that, that's like where my head is at with business mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, like, I, I think a lot of people can uh, can relate to, to how I feel about it, um, mm -hmm. but they don't speak up about it. They don't really talk about, like, hey, I really want to be ethical with this. And mean it. And yeah. Really mean it. It's like, how are your actions? You know, what you're creating. Is it, is it aligned with you know what you're doing? Is it what you're posting and stuff? It's like, Gary V. You know why people love him as well? It's because he's so fucking authentic. Yeah. But he says this. He'll pull up content from like 2000, and it's the exact same thing that he says today. Yeah. It's like that right there is a, yeah, is a that's, brand. That's one of the biggest things I could tell anybody trying to be successful on social media and probably most other places is the sooner you can be a hundred percent authentic, the better. Like I wish I would have known that right off the bat. Cause I was always the first six months or so of YouTube, I was trying to be someone else and really? yeah, it'll hurt you a lot more than you think because once you're you, no one else can be you. Damn. And the reason you, the reason you like these other people is cause they stand out. Right. So if everybody, if everybody's trying to be like someone else, no one stands out, you know, dude, fucking golden nuggets, man. Yeah, I just I wish I would have known that because it took me a while to learn. But you know that's that's all a learning curve. You know you need you need to learn how to have a camera presence. No, I don't know if anybody can just just had it right off the bat. But, oh uh, no, man, I sounded like an oh god. Even even these huge YouTube go watch PewDiePie's first video, dude. Hilarious. He still has problems. <laughs> we we like, love you, Pewds. Yeah, we're Pewds. We're come on the show. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be a start to a podcast, wouldn't that's it awesome. be? Like a million views. But. immediately but but yeah you know like dude i, I think we've had a, a good conversation man I, I don't even i've enjoyed it is there anything else that you feel like we should we should fucking touch on man i'm up with anything and everything i, I love being able to because a lot of people like to listen and watch these for a long time yeah they like conversation they like what's next yeah i do that all the time i just put up play a podcast and then i'll just do my homework or whatever or start writing a script for a video so you're a multitasker yeah but i will admit Sometimes I'm not fully engaged in the podcast. Wait, it's dude, just kind of playing. Dude, time out, time out, time out. Because you just said something. You said you write scripts. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so you really, so you, okay, okay. What do you So just, obviously you're big into psychology, okay? I, I believe in scripts. I do. So I, I write down talking points, you know, that I need to hit on. I have a notebook and whatever I'm talking about i'll write down the main topics right. but then after that i kind of just free ball and then i just have it right here next to me i noticed so, that you're you're pretty on point when i was watching your videos you're on point with like making sure you say a topic like i've no, also always noticed that yeah um 
but it's also okay to uh what i've just now started realizing is that people actually appreciate you leaving some of your mess ups and your flaws in the videos because yes. you seem so much more human and um i used to just cut out every little mistake every but, yeah, but yeah, uh, you know whatever and but uh now i started leaving them in and people actually really like it so dude that's that's true so like stop hiding what you're saying is stop hiding your mistakes stop hiding your failures show them to the world yeah. because people actually relate to it here's the thing is that everything that we create is really comes down to relatability <clears throat> how do you relate with your communication with your with your relationship how do you guys relate is, yeah. is there any relatability there mm -hmm. if you're always fucking up in a relationship and the other person isn't mm -hmm. It makes it seem like you're the problem. Yeah. But the fact is the other person is just not talking about all the fuck ups. Like I guarantee you, you and I both have the same amount of fuck ups each day. Like we just small things. We'll grab yeah. a we'll grab a, a handle and we'll miss the fucking handle. Oh, like, I fuck up all the time. Yeah. Dude, you wanna you wanna be the unfuckables? Wait, wait. <laughs> the fuck no, the fuck up a bulls. The fuck up a bulls. <laughs> Oh lord! It's like a fucking new Gosh. superhero team. Yeah, t Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Expendable. You've heard of the Expendables. Now the fuck up a balls. <laughs> the fuck up a balls. Dot com. But subscribe, have you subscribe now. But oh, dude, that's uh, yeah. I I'm really glad that you came on here, man, because I think uh, our conversation has been pretty fucking rad. It's yeah. been like all over the place, it. and I enjoy it. I respect someone more who has flaws and embraces them rather than somebody that tries to hide them too because i i uh, i respect someone more who has flaws and embraces them rather than somebody that has no flaws at all mm. like a, if you're the dude with a big nose but you're like fuck yeah i'm the big nose dude call me pinocchio or whatever i'm like shit yeah you're my you're bro. awesome but if you just what's a flaw that you have mm, skinny calves <laughs> really um, it bothers you a lot doesn't it I mean, not as much as it used to because I got some veins that's popping out of them now so they don't look so small, as small. Mm, vascularity, baby. Vascularity, vascularity helps. Vascularity Leanness helps. Um, Do you have any, anything? Shitty hairline. Uh, you can't stand I think hairline. I might go bald. I might go bald someday, which would suck, but. You think so? Maybe. My dad's bald. I noticed that I you. I love you, dad, though. I, I noticed nice that you guy. wanted to make sure that your hair was, like, good. You were like, hey, is my hair good? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm trying a new hair product, so I'm like. Test the water. That's a, that's a hair product, dude. I don't know fucking know shit about this hair product. I put some. I actually got a little some. I do. Going on I do there. have a little soap. Yeah. How did you know that? I just. I can tell. It's, little, you, it's got a little shine to it. Thank you, brother. It's matte. Yeah. What is it? I don't fucking know. It, uh, yeah. I like my barber. Him and I talk about hair products, mm. and I don't know shit about them. Yeah. So it's really just him talking to me about <laughs> it. <laughs> it's just him talking. And he's like, you know, this one's good. This one's good. Try this one out. Try this one. Out. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you? Oh, another flaw is I fucking can't grow hardly any facial hair. It bothers you. Uh, I mean, not that much. Cause, like, so what bothers you, bro? What bothers me? Um, Nothing? How about, how about maybe it's communication? That doesn't, I mean, it, it bothers me, but I'm, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much, though. Okay. I just so, feel, so, I just so, feel, I just feel so this is bad my, about this it. This is you know? what my experience was of you when I first yeah. walked out of the elevator. Okay. I'm someone that I immediately, you I'm pick like, up on things. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, no. Or what? Okay, I'll, t I'll let you talk. Yeah, let me talk, brother. Thank you, brother. Say it, brother. Sure, brother. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Always need validation. Um, no, but I know I, what I experienced was when you walked out of the, when I walked out of the ele elevator to say what's up, it was like you were, I don't know, it wasn't nerves, but it was like, it was like a little uncomfortable, like, like this is a new situation for myself. I don't know kind of what, this is or like the untold am, am i close to right um i mean maybe that, that might be kind of underlying but I'm, I'm usually pretty comfortable meeting new people and stuff like that but um but you're not yourself immediately when you meet meet, meet new people like all, while we yeah as, i guess i guess maybe go, there's there's that like gauging uh period small where i gotta kind of like gauge like what's cool to say what's not cool like are you you know what you're all about like okay see okay so so, so yeah, this is what i'm gonna say is i feel that, like that i mean it's okay to do that though because you're not the same person with everybody like i'm not gonna talk to my grandma the same way i'm gonna talk to my best friend you know so it's okay to kind of like give it a little period of all right what's cool what's not like, but does that mean you're not being authentic um because have i changed i don't think i have i, th I think i've been like 
No, you haven't. But I, don't know. I think you see what I'm saying. It's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. it's very. I interesting. think it's okay to be to change. Yeah. But, but but here's the thing: is that I believe that we all have a soft side to us. We all have an exciting. Like some yeah, of us yeah. are a little bit more type A. Like I'm more type A. I'm more. Yo, let's fucking go. <gasps> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not mm-hmm. that much. But I think where when it comes down to actually, this is my opinion. I know that when uh, people are, are trying to like just listen and gauge how to talk in the conversation and stuff, I don't I, I don't feel as those that that's a hundred percent authentic. Because think about this: when you're at a business deal, mm-hmm. let's say there's an investor there, right? You have to be strategic. And when you're being strategic, how much of your authentic self are you being? You're not, right? Mm-hmm. If you were your authentic self, you were like, yo, what's up, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yo, fucking sign the deal, baby. $100 million, motherfucker. Yo, yeah. yo, I'll fuck with you. Like, I curse all the time. My mom's like, yo, can you not curse? And I'm like, I'm like, I fucking curse. Mm-hmm. I hid it from social media for five, six, five years, six, five and a half, six years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wasn't my authentic self mm-hmm. because I was always okay how is he gonna think of me or how is she gonna think of me how will this audience appear to me how will the investor sound am i going to get that person to say the right thing Mm -hmm. and so being strategic could be authentic but it's all it's it's way more in depth you see what i'm saying i see what you're saying so those are my thoughts it's like if you walked in and you were doing all this bro i would have been like dude i fucking love this dude immediately (laughs) i'm like yo this dude's fucking dope yeah but but like for the first part of it, I was like I was like he's not being himself, and I could huh. and I noticed. So like yeah. I would ask questions just to hear your response. Right. I would I would bring certain things up. You know, we talked about Brandon Carter, great mm-hmm. dude. Like we we like I wanted to relate in some way and be able to create this relatability mm-hmm. so that you can be more comfortable. So that when we, when we did come on here, this is a fucking great podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you were yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing is. And when you see somebody, when you meet someone, you might be mm-hmm. good with women, right? Great. But like new people, I think it's the best just to be you. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Same thing goes with like women, like you were mentioning. A lot of people try to put on this like super suave personality or they try to act one way or the bad boy or hard to get. Like that might work for a week. It might work for a hookup. But if you're trying to land something real it's gotta be eventually you gotta be yourself you know and eventually and if you're not you don't end up being who she expected you to be that shit's over are you in a relationship no not right now why i'm unlovable (laughs) brother come on brother i'm short and ugly no no so oh my god (laughs) but you're gonna make fucking people like insecure and shit (laughs) man like think about the jokes that you say so like my jokes check this out my jokes and when I make jokes, mm-hmm. it's not about a person's appearance. Mm-hmm. It's about something that's like not like th- not to the core of them. It's not like to it's not them in themselves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I do feel like I'm unlovable though. Really? Yes. Why? I I don't know, man. I feel like when I really like a girl, I always fuck it up. I don't know why. Or she always loses So you're interest. a pickup artist, but what you have problems with is the connection level of it. Yeah. Fuck, dude. So maybe I can come in here. Okay, help me. So when you're clear on who you are. Well, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, so I think part of it is when I really like a girl, I think way too hard about it. And I try to do everything right. I try not to like be too available, try not to do this, that, and the other. And I think maybe they can sense it. Or not yourself, man. Or yeah, I know, but it's way it's way easier yeah. to say that yeah. than to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I do the same thing because you, you're thinking like, shit, like shit. How are like they gonna react? Did, like she she didn't text me back. Like should I text her? Should I not? Like if I was really being myself, I'd send her like ten texts in a row. But you, but, but you're like you're like inner, at the be- at the beginning, man. Your inner person's your is like don't fucking do but, that. But, but here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, bro. Yeah. If they don't like that. It they're would, not the one not for the, you. You are fucking right, man. Like, if they're not like that, yeah. then move on. True. But here's the thing. You don't want to send fucking text messages, t- 10 text <laughs> messages. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, in, in like when you first meet a girl, like, get to know them. Once they feel comfortable, then fucking yeah. send te- 10 text messages. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I truly believe that when we're ourselves, that's where the relationship's going to come into play. <laughs> like, for me, I'm dating, right? Mm. 
You are right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I'm not in a relationship, but I'm dating. Sure. I'm meeting new women. I'm going on dates. You know, I've, yeah. I've had someone come into town. Like, you know, I'm really getting to know these women. And you fly girls in? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Would you? No. No? Oh. Let me tell you something actually about me. I believe if a woman doesn't grab her pocketbook, if I'm out to dinner, like my first date, mm-hmm. if she doesn't grab or go for a pocketbook when the when the check comes mm-hmm. and offer to pay, Get out. I don't think she's right for me. Yeah. Honestly. I want an independent, strong, confident woman that can t- handle her. Yeah. That can take care of her. That's the sexiest thing to me. For sure. When a woman can walk in somewhere and grab me and tell me where I'm going, that's beauty. Yeah. That's fucking beauty to me. And like if we're sitting down and and like you expect me to pay, how the fuck how the fuck is everyone equal in this world yet you expect me to pay all the time? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I understand. I'll pay. I like I'm totally cool with that. I'm I respect same way. that. Also, like if I pay for something, say thank you. That's yeah. it. I had a girl. I was dating a girl and I'd buy every dinner because she, you know, she had no money. She's a fucking college yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> um, I do okay. But anyways, and she doesn't say thank you. It's like, what? It's like, why? It, yeah. I always say thank you. But here's the cool you. thing, You could man. fucking do anything. You could open the door for me. You know, what anything. I'll always say thank you. Anytime you go out of your way to do something. Yeah, you me. did it a lot, like today. Yeah. We were like walking in somewhere and like the air opened up the door. You're like, thank you. Yep. Air. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But but dude, man, it, it really comes out to auth- being authentic and not settling. Yeah. So this is this is for me. Mm-hmm. I've met so many different women. I've been on so many different dates. I'm a confident guy, man. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of women that can't find confident guys. There's we. Mm-hmm. I lacked confidence just a year and a half ago, two years ago. Really? The fact that I'm so confident now in who I am, and I'm so real, and I'm so energetic, and I have so much vision and passion. Mm-hmm. When I walk into a room. People recognize me immediately, and I can confidently say that. I'm not mm. saying that from cockiness. Yeah, like I'm confident about that. What do you think is the difference between co- confidence and cockiness? I think cockiness, uh, when you think of cockiness, that's an insecurity of how people think about you. Yeah. But when you say you're confident, you don't give a fuck what people think about you. Mm-hmm. I think that's really the only difference okay. is that I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in me. I think that's the most like, beautiful thing you can have. When I see a woman and they're like, I believe in myself. I just know I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm good at this. When it gets a little bit overboard and, and you're like pushing it onto other people and comparing yourself to other people, that's when it's cockiness. Mm-hmm. But if it's for yourself, like you, sh- you go up to a, a, a keyboard to play piano or whatever, right? And you're like, I'm going to be able to do this. And the teacher's like, okay. And, you st- and like you're not very good at it, but you keep on getting better and stuff. Like that's confident, man. And I think that that's what um, I, I won't stand for anything less in mm-hmm. my relationship. So if I go on dates, I don't settle. I, I do not settle. I will Good. tell. And I'll also tell a girl at every Mike knows this. I've sent a three minute voice memo. I've sent big ass voice memos saying, hey, look, like you, you literally didn't show up and I don't fuck with that. <laughs> and I hold you to a way higher standard. And if you want anything out of this, then show up and don't do that again. Because not only are you not showing up for me, but you're not showing up for yourself. You're not showing up for other people around you. And every single time, bro, they respond. They say, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy that you, that you shared that with me. Mm-hmm. And that's like, and, and here's the thing. When you ask for permission as well, before you do that, you say, hey, do you mind if I share something with you? Mm. Or do you mind if I share my experience? Hmm. You know what? They, that's valid. That, that's okay. Yeah. You're welcomed into my space, into mm. this little bubble of like, Give me all the feedback. Right. And then when they hear it, they feel like it's closer to them. They feel like it's closer to their heart mm-hmm. because they're the ones that allowed it. Hmm. So they can't just be like, why did you tell me that? What the fuck is wrong with you? You're like, you said I could. I, I, I asked if I could share. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, fuck, you're right. Well, you can expect that text from me after that. <laughs> Brennan, can and, I share something? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you no. I'm going to be like, I'm like, no, no. Fuck. <laughs> but but okay, you see bye. what I'm saying, man? That's where relationships like long term. It's like it's like how do you communicate with them? Mm-hmm. You don't settle for anything less than what you want. Mm-hmm. And like those thank yous and everything, you bring it up to them. If they do it again, you bring it up. If they do it again, you're like, look, I can't see you anymore mm. until yeah. you fix that. And yeah. if you don't fix that, it's just never gonna be. Sure. Yeah. And that's it, man. 
Like yeah. I'm settling right now in, in a couple of relationships, to be honest. Not this one though. Nah, brother. Shoot, shooting up. Shit. <laughs> but yeah, bro. So 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 that's that's it, man. That's yeah. all I get. That's all I got. I like it. That's valid points, yeah, for sure. I agree. Fuck man, there's a lot, a lot ever, of content in this. Did you ever do the uh the locked door test? Have you heard of it? What's that? I can't remember who came up. Mike knows, he's laughing over there. The word? No, locked. the locked door. It's where you pick her up and when you leave your car, you lock your door. And wait, am I, doing, am I saying it right? I hope so. Do okay. you open up doors for women? Yeah, I mean if I'm in front of them, but if Chairs? I'm like if I'm like coming from behind then I don't know. Really open it. I don't. You don't? I speed up. And you I run up. in front? Really? Speed up. I don't do that. Confidence, bro. Women fucking love a man that will literally go out of their way to aid in, in their in their path or their vision, wherever they're going. Mm. Like, dude, I'm, dude, fuck, bro. This shit goes a mile, I'm telling you. Like chairs, grabbing chairs, even for friends. Mm. Like if yeah. there's a girl next to me and I grab their door and open it, the first thing that goes off in my mind is like, oh my gosh, I hope she doesn't think that like I want to date her and all these different things. Like, oh my gosh, I don't. Feel, I hope this isn't weird. Mm -hmm. And she's just my friend. Yeah, they appreciate it, and that friendship locked even stronger. Yeah, more to me. Do you ever get that feeling though, if you do something like that, that she feels like you're trying to mack on her or something, and then you feel like oh, yes, that's I'm yes, not, I wasn't doing every that. time, every yeah. time. But here's the thing: so is how that do you, how do you are you that? no? So hold on, <laughs> okay, this well. is this is very interesting, man. Because usually when we bring well, something well, yeah, up in our mind, let's talk, let's, let's think about both directions. What if you aren't, what if you're just being a friend, but then you do something nice for her and then she thinks you're trying to get with her or like trying to flirt with her. That's her. You just, you fuck it. Who cares? But that's her, man. Yeah. Here's the thing is that we all, all we have control over is us, mm -hmm. right? And how we show up for people. The way I want to show up for people is in one way with my, the respect that I want. Mm-hmm. So like I want to give that respect to them. Like I'm going to I'm going to walk on the the road side of the street at all times. Like like the street side. Okay. Next to a girl. I'm never going to oh, allow okay. the girl to be on the on next to the curb. Okay, I see what you're saying. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Have you ever So that you die. So that when the so fucking that, truck <laughs> barrels through your face. <laughs> no, but like from <laughs> Or you die first at least. No, but like I I have the power. I have the the capabilities yeah. to do a little bit more physically you could than the woman. Right. Forearm shiver. And that's not being a fucking uh like against feminism or any like yeah. any of this shit. Like I just physically am able to do more. If I'm walking in a crosswalk, you'll see me. Whenever I walk with a woman, I walk whenever there's like, you know, there's two two different ways of uh it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. When the cars are coming towards wherever that crosswalk oh, is, you walk on that side? I'm on that side. Mm -hmm. Once it crosses, I'll always shift her and I go to the other side. Mm. Every time. You've you've uh, experienced positive reactions to that too? Oh dude. They they are they like oh pretty they recognize this because like every every move you make, like they feel it. When you put yeah. your, your your hand on their low back mm -hmm. and you shift them over, mm -hmm. it's comfortable. They're like, someone is holding me. Mm -hmm. Someone is protecting me. Yeah. Someone is bring it, it's a, that's a caregiver right there. That's yeah. like they're really caring and giving at the same time. So yeah, man. That yeah. that's where relationships take off. It's like, how do you show up for your woman? Are you showing up for yourself? Because mm -hmm. if you're only showing up for her, that's dependency. Right. But if you're showing up for yourself and just giving to her, that's growth. That's super growth. Mm -hmm. Give to yourself first. Really show up for yourself, and it'll just work in your favor when you. It'll just automatically show up for her. I could get behind that. Fuck, bro. We're about to be. We're about to have be married in like a, <laughs> in a year. Like after this conversation, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the love here. Is there anything else that we <laughs> want to talk about, man? Because I, 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 I think, man, we've touched on so much. This is yeah, and it's been nonstop. Like it's been like, oh man. If you want a relationship, have you ever experienced heartbreak? Yep. Yeah. Brutal. Was it's? Did you get? Have you ever gotten cheated on? Yeah. But that shit hurt. Yeah, but yeah, and then I and then I went back to her and then she on me again. Oh. Um, so, so like for me, I'm a I'm a hopeless romantic, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling that you love hard. I have a yeah. feeling you yes. love hard, bro. I'm a lover. Yeah. So I, like, I love doctor. That's what they call. Have me you ever been heartbroken? Sport. Yeah. How was that? A couple times, I think. Okay, hold on. Well, mm, time out. You just said I think. <laughs> no, man. No. 
What do you mean? You know. You yeah. know when you're, bro, I'm telling you, there is nothing. Mike, anybody else that's listening, watching, there is nothing like heartbreak. Yeah. Imagine, imagine your person, that person you love, that you want to marry, that you care for so much deeply, they basically die in front of you, but yet they're still there. Yeah. Like you're walking everywhere, you can't touch them. Mm -hmm. You're walking everywhere, you can't say I love you. Yeah. You're walking everywhere, you can't grab her on her back and allow her to go in. You can't run into your house and give her a hug and put your head into her crease and just feel like it's, it's, um, it's the end. Like you can't go to sleep with your fucking legs crossed. Mm -hmm. Dude, I've experienced heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And my heart was broken. Like in pieces, man. Everything else damn. in my entire life. My, my heart's damn near broken just hearing you talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> Fuck. My heart, bro, listen, man. Like because a lot of people think they know what heartbreak is, man. But if you didn't experience tears every single day and you didn't experience all the bad thoughts and you didn't experience like, like feeling like you had all this weight added onto you out of nowhere and like you were alone in the world, yeah. man, you haven't experienced <clears throat> heartbreak because that shit, it's hard to work. Yeah. You, 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 bro, I didn't work. I, I, I couldn't fucking move. I, I started getting sick. You know, you've heard of, you've heard of relationships where they're like super old and like 75, 80 years old, 85, their wife dies or the husband dies and then they die. Died of a broken heart. That's love, bro. Yeah. So like, that's why when you said, I think yeah. you felt it, you started to feel it a little bit. Yeah. But when you feel it, man, it doesn't hurt for one month. Yeah. It doesn't hurt for two months. It stings for three months. Yeah. It hurts even more in four months mm -hmm. In eight months. You're getting over it, but you got to remember you loved someone. Someone was a part of you for so long. So they're dead, but alive everywhere. Yeah. And then when they get into another relationship, for me, it didn't bother me too much. But for some people, whew. you guys, time heals all wounds. <laughs> Life goes on. It's right? true. Yeah. You will get over it. Yeah. If you're going you through will. heartbreak or, or if you're afraid of heartbreak, eventually. It, here's the thing is that with wounds come stronger skin. Mm -hmm. 100%. With wounds come stronger, stronger skin. And if you're fearful of taking that next step and either breaking up with someone or letting go of something, like the longer you wait, the worse it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And the longer it's going to hurt. And the more stressed you're going to be. And that's the truth. The sooner you do it, the sooner you're going to experience the pain, it's going to hurt, but the sooner you're going to heal and the sooner everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to grow so much from it. My life today, what it is, I thank my ex-girlfriend all the time, the one that I was in love with. Thank you so much. I love you. And you literally were at the, at the fucking forefront of who I am today. Thank you. Now I'm adventurous. Now I have the create you experience. Now I own businesses. Now I'm in Denver, Colorado. Now I travel around the world. Now I guess speak. Now I do this, 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 this. Thank you. That's it. Now he has Brett motherfucking Maverick yeah, on his baby, show. baby, Logan Paul, baby. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but dude, that, that, that's all I have to say, man. I, and I think I want to wrap up now because uh, this has been a fucking, we could literally, I literally think we could talk forever. Let's go on vacation. Let's do it. For sure. I'm like, down. I feel like we could talk forever. Where are we going? I don't fucking know. Cuba? Uh, Cuba? Okay, sure. You want to go to Cuba? I don't know. I'll go anywhere. Dude, you wanna, do you want to go to Europe? I want to go to Australia. What the? I just came back from us. Dude, oh, really? I'll go, well, I, I'll go I, to Australia. I, I lived in Europe, so I like did all that. I'd already did that. I want to do it. You just said anywhere, and then I go in there, and like it's like you set me <laughs> up for right. failure. Sorry. That was my bad. Like, hey, oh. man, do you want to go eat Chipotle? Yeah, man, I'm super down. Double chicken. Uh, Fuck Chipotle. I want to go to Moe's. Yeah. No, no, I want to. Well, yeah, I should have I should have forefronted that. But I, I, j I lived in Italy, and I went all over the place in Europe, like 10 different countries or something. So next, I want to go somewhere in southern Asia, maybe like Japan. Thailand dude or, or I'm 100% down yeah to do all of them yeah. I'm down to go to Sydney Japan and uh while we're over there mm -hmm. really I would love to go to Japan experience that culture yeah there's also on the island like there's a there's a very um 
uh, American culture in like specific parts where yeah. like you you can feel very very comfortable and it's easy to get around and talk to people and they'll tell you where to go. It's really yeah. cool. And then in, in Australia, I've been to Sydney. I love to go back to Sydney, but I also like to I travel to Melbourne. Nice. And and uh, I actually have an opportunity to speak at a big conference in December, in in Perth. Mm-hmm. So, I believe like she said that hey, you could definitely come out and, and speak. Um, so if you're down, bro, we yeah. could we can we can talk about it. When? But when is it? December. December. Yeah, December. December. yeah I'm, it's like I'm probably cool, down. It's like a cool cool time to go out, go out there as well. Yeah, it'd be tight. So it's probably warm too. Yeah, yeah. So Mike, you want to come? Yeah, Mike. Down. Yeah. Cool. He's straight, he's not. Yeah, he's not. Just so you know. So so everyone that's listening, watching, um, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience. This has been a uh, absolute joy. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channels. Just my name, Brett Maverick. Instagram is Brett. MVRK, go follow me there. I put a lot of fun stuff on there. You won't find anywhere else. Wait. And uh, yeah, that's pretty. And much I it. think people were able to understand you a little. Oh, bit go more. follow, go follow my uh, vlog channel too, Brett Maverick Vlogs, because about to be popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely go check them out. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you. Dude, thank you so much for having me on. This was a great time. Yeah, and I'll send you footage, man. Like the footage will be really cool because there's a lot of really cool content from this. This nice. is super dope. So. Uh, thank you again for, for joining us and, and sharing the create you experience course, with totally. everyone listening and watching. No problem um, at all. Hey guys, remember from this in summary mm-hmm. is be yourself. You noticed, you know, we fucked around, uh, but we also got serious and we brought our own visions to life. I learned, he learned, and we know you learned as well. And don't ever think that you can't s- continue to learn. Don't ever believe that you're not good enough. Don't ever believe that you can't accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Brett was in college and he quit on what his dream was. And then he came back to it. He didn't give up and he took the next step and look where he is now. Same thing with me. (laughs) Open your heart to love all passions, all relationships, and just take the next step. That's all you need to do. And that's your focus. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. For another episode of the Create You Experience, we are here every single week. Don't forget about Quick Time Fridays where I go through topics. And also don't forget in the description and in the uh, the show notes, that link. You got to click it, put your email in there, and get those seven free products. Absolutely free. I don't want anything from that. It's just a review, a review on iTunes. So thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Right. I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You gotta create you.